Today we look at solving an order of operations problems using our properties of equality. Some of, uh, sometimes this is called an algebraic proof. So I'm going to work through this order of operations problem, which is found in your notes, uh, step by step, and explain the justification through the properties of equality uh, why I'm allowed to perform each step. So this is given to us, and I'll write given here. And as I look through my, my uh, expression, the first thing I'm supposed to perform is all operations within a parentheses. And as I look inside the parentheses, I see the first operation that is uh, to be performed by order of operations is multiplication, 5 times 2. So I will go ahead and rewrite the entire expression, except that I'll evaluate 5 times 2. And then I'll give justification for why I'm allowed to take 5 times 2 out of the problem and replace it with a 10. Now, as I look in my different uh, properties of algebraic equality, I see one that says if A equals B, then A may be replaced by B. That's called the substitution property, and I am substituting uh, an, an equal expression for an equal term. So over here, I'll write substitution. Okay, next I look at my, uh, my property, or sorry, my expression again, and I'm still working within the parentheses, and this time I see 3 minus 3, because I'm going to add and subtract from left to right. So, I am going to change that thought from 3 minus 3 to 3 plus a negative 3. Remember, subtracting is the same as adding its opposite. They will give you the, the same outcome. So, I will once again rewrite... Uh, 3 plus negative 3 as 0 plus 10 squared plus 2 times 1 half. So, this may look like substitution. If A equals B, then A may replace B. However, we have a stronger property of equality that more closely resembles this. A number plus its, I'll call it opposite for a moment, equals 0. That looks like this property right here, and that is called the additive inverse property. And I'll say it correctly now. A number plus its additive inverse gets us to zero. So that is the additive inverse. I'll look at this again. I'm still working inside my parentheses. I have the operation of addition. Zero plus ten is ten squared plus two times one half. Again, this might look like substitution. That's always our fallback. I always say, when in doubt, sub it out. But we're not in doubt here. 0 plus 10 equals 10, because 0 is known as the additive identity. It looks like this one right here. A number plus 0 will always return to, it, uh, to, return to us that number. It maintains its identity. So over here, I'll write additive identity. I am completely finished with all operations inside of the parentheses. I could actually drop the parentheses at this point. They're no longer needed since all operations have been operated on. And I am left with 10 squared plus 2 times 1 half. I now am going to work with exponents, uh, again, through order of operations. 10 squared is the same as 100 plus 2 times 1 half. Why am I allowed to replace 10 squared? with 100? Well, that is substitution. If 10 squared equals 100, then 10 squared may replace 100. I have to write that. And that is my substitution property. Okay, so I'm working through my problem. I am now completely free of exponents, completely free of parentheses, and now I need to multiply before I add. So I will rewrite 100 plus 2 times a half is 1. Half of 2 is 1. And that, again, could mistakenly be called substitution, but there is a stronger, more accurate uh, property of equality for that. 2 times a half looks a lot like this. A number times its multiplicative inverse equals 1. 
Another way of saying that is a number times its reciprocal equals one. Sometimes we call this uh, a multiplicative inverse, sometimes we call it a reciprocal. The proper name is the multiplicative inverse property. Multiplicative. It's kind of fun to say. Uh, multiplicative property. Okay. And then lastly, 100 plus 1. 100 plus 1 is 101. Whoops. Spelled 101 wrong. And once again, as we look up here, that's the substitution property. So as you can see, substitution appeared three times. It is quite useful. It does get used a lot, but it's not always the most specific answer that we can give. And if something like the additive inverse, the additive identity, um, or the multiplicative identity property is being used, then we should use that proper name for it. Uh, in review, this is the substitution property, the multiplicative identity, the reflexive property, the multiplicative inverse property, the additive inverse property, the multiplicative property of zero, and the additive identity. Thank you.